Today on Retire With Purpose, finding success in your second act, safely spending more in retirement, and claiming Social Security while still working. Welcome to Retire With Purpose, a show specifically designed to help you maximize your financial confidence in retirement. Casey Weed is the CEO and Chief Visionary of Howard Bailey Financial, a certified financial planner and Wall Street Journal bestselling author. He's your host on Retire With Purpose. Great to see you again. I'm Lee Kelser here with Casey Weed, certified financial planner. He's the president at Howard Bailey Financial. He's a Wall Street Journal bestselling author, and because he's also the host of the Retire With Purpose podcast, he gets to hang out with some pretty interesting people, and that's what we've got for you today. Ken Coleman, author of a book called The Proximity Principle. That's right. We've got Ken Coleman. We're going to share some clips with you here today. Ken, you might know him from The Ken Coleman Show, or you might also know him as a member of the Dave Ramsey Solutions team, close friends with Dave. And I always find it interesting being able to interview Dave's close friends and associates because we get a little behind the scenes with the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. <laughs> Dave, Dave Ramsey. Ramsey yeah. And that's what we were able to do here with Ken. Uh, but he also has that best-selling book. He has the Proximity Principle, which we discussed extensively. And we're also going to have a special offer for you here later in the show. We're going to share with you how you can get a copy of that book at absolutely, absolutely no cost. So stick around for that. But first off, we're going to share a clip with Ken where he shares with us why it makes sense to have a specific purpose for every facet of your life. You know, I mean, you could you can have a purpose statement in your relationships and in your personal life, and you can have a purpose statement in your professional life. In fact, I recommend it uh, because you, you, your your purpose is your why, and that is the clarity zone. It's kind of like when you were a kid and you played freeze tag or something like that, and you're running around and everybody's chasing you, you just want to get safe, and things are hectic and crazy, and a COVID pandemic hits the world and it kicks you out of your job, and all of a sudden you start to question everything. If you don't know what your professional purpose is, if you don't know what your personal purpose is, you're going to be like a, a ball of tumbleweed we used to see blowing across the, the dirt streets and the old westerns or the cowboy you know, uh, movies and all that kind of stuff. And so what you've got to understand is your purpose is your why, and it's clarity, and so you retreat to clarity. Next up, Ken is going to share with us why you might be surprised to learn 70% of Americans step into jobs that they aren't passionate about. But hey, it's okay, and Ken's going to tell us why. Yeah, I think you can find out your, what your work purpose is, and you can get a, a Mount Everest, a clear vision, a big vision of what the dream job is. At that point, when you're really clear on that, uh, then it's a lot easier to step into those entry-level jobs that you're not really passionate about because you, you're passionate about the big picture. So it's like you got to climb this ladder, but at the top of this ladder is the dream. Is anybody really excited about the actual rung of the ladder that they're on? Nobody's ever excited about it. A, ra a ladder is a utilitarian function. I've got to get to this rung, then this rung, then this rung. And yet what, what the problem is is most people enter the workforce without a vision, without, without that big Mount Everest goal, the dream job. They just don't know what the dream job is. And so they, they go for safety, what they think is safety. And, of course, you know, safe seems so smart, except for in, the, in, 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 in chasing your dream and living and working on purpose. Safe is not very smart because you'll end up going to a school that you really can't afford, getting a degree that you don't want and can't even use. A lot of Ken's work is around helping individuals step into a job they are really passionate about, starting a new career, maybe following your entrepreneurial dream to start that business that you've been thinking about since you were a little kid. However, maybe you find that you're 50, 55, 60, maybe you're 45, maybe you just feel like it's a little too late in life to go out there and start a new business and follow those dreams. Ken shares us why it's actually the optimal time. Well, here's the problem. We aren't creatures with only a brain. We've got a heart, and the heart's what's nudging them. The heart's empty. Heart ha the heart hasn't felt any heat around the workplace maybe in 25 years, and people know that. And they go, money's not what it's about. I just, I could keep doing this, but if i got to come in here one more day and try to get some, manufacture some juice where there is no juice and try to get fired up over this where I don't care about the results, 
I haven't cared about the results in forever. Uh, I don't really love the work anymore. I've mastered this. There's no challenge. I'm not growing. Well, that will that will begin to create buildup on the heart. So I, in that case, I would say to those folks, all right, that's what you're really worried about, isn't it? And you get them to admit that. And then you go, all right, let's focus on what we need to focus on. And that is what would make your heart sing? What would be something you'd love to do? Because financially now, you actually don't have a whole lot of risk at all in your life. And, and it's not even a risky proposition to change gears anyway, if you do it the right way. It's a pretty neat time in life. And that's why I called my book Job Optional, because that's the goal. Retirement's not the goal. Becoming job optional is the goal. Maybe you decide to continue your job, your career, uh, but you, now you have financial freedom. So you, so you look at that job in a different way. Now you have financial freedom and you can take some risks and start a new business. And if you do that, the odds are in your favor. This is what Ken has to say about that. Here's what's really fun. Entrepreneurs over the age of 45 are more successful than entrepreneurs under the age of 45. And the reason is, is what you're touching on. Life experience and a lot more conviction and clarity. A 25-year-old is rarely going to be able to have the true clarity and conviction of somebody over the age of 45. And the reason is, is because they're still experiencing life. They're still formulating a lot of their opinions and a lot of their perspectives. And they still got a lot more to learn to be able to really shape, you know, their opinions and what they want to do versus somebody who's over the age of 45 or somebody even in their 50s. A 55-year-old entrepreneur has a greater chance of success because they've already lived enough life. They know what matters to them. And they've learned a lot. I mean, they, they've, they've seen so much. And so they're less likely to make uh, the young, youthful, immature mistakes that young entrepreneurs make. Yeah, you know, all this gray hair comes up for a reason, right? You <laughs> might as well put it to work as you start that second career. Well, I, Lee, I really think this is the huge and just monumental impact that we can make at Howard Bailey. That's our mission, is to elevate the lives of the individuals we're working with so that they can go out and elevate the lives of others. And they can do that and make a bigger impact in the world because they have financial freedom, but it's more than that, it's those gray hairs that you've got. It's all that experience yeah. that the largest generation in history, the baby boomer generation has all of this experience, so much to offer once they become job optional. I truly believe we can see a huge impact make in the, made in the world and we can see things start to change for the better. And that's why Casey's podcast is called Retire With Purpose, and you can hear more on Ken Coleman on episode number 198. And if you're really interested in what Ken had to say, we've got an even better opportunity for you. Casey uh, put, worked with Ken to get together a, a big stack of books, and he'd like to give them to you. So just be one of the next 10 callers at 866-482-9559, and you can get a copy of Ken Coleman's book, The Proximity Principle. It really kind of focuses on how to position yourself near the right people and the right places so you can step into the role that you were created to fill. So they're giving away these books until they're gone. So I hope you're one of the next people who will call 866-482-9559 or you can simply text the word PROX to 482-9559, 866-482-9559. All right, coming right back, Marshall Johnson, Casey's good friend and the vice president at Howard Bailey joins us. We're gonna talk about spending patterns in retirement and why you may not be spending as much as you can and how much more you could be enjoying life. Stay with us. Do you have an IRA or 401k? You think of this as your money, but it's really a shared account with the IRS and it all boils down to taxes. You've been contributing to your retirement accounts for years, but eventually Uncle Sam will want his cut. Having a strategy in place for how and when you'll withdraw that hard-earned money could have a huge impact on how much you pay in taxes versus how much you keep. Safeguard your lifelong savings now with a complimentary tax guide by going to retirewithpurpose.com slash taxes. That's retirewithpurpose.com slash taxes. Welcome back, and we are now joined by my good friend, Marshall Johnson, who is also the co-host of the Retire With Purpose podcast, where every single Friday, we break down one of the four articles that we send out every single Friday as part of our weekend reading for retirees email series. That is one email to your inbox every single Friday, where we take topics that are trending in the retirement planning space. We break those down in an easily digestible format and give you our top takeaways 
then we do a broad format discussion on the Retire With Purpose podcast. Sign up and check out the podcast at retirewithpurpose.com. We're going to be covering one of those articles with you here today that was from podcast episode number 191. This is the Financial Planning Association's article titled, Right Sizing Retirement, Exploring the Retirement Consumption Gap in Early Retirement. So Marshall, why did we choose this article? Well, first of all, it's David Blanchett, right? CFP, CFA. He's, he's been all over. He's been on our podcast, but he writes really well. And it, it, I can't even call this an article, right? This is like a white paper. This is a study, a research study, a white paper. And it's got a tremendous amount of really good information that's very applicable today. Yeah, and it was really designed to educate financial advisors, right. financial planners on the latest trends in retirement spend, spending, the latest research in the retirement world so that they can do a better job for you. Mm -hmm. And we're giving this information to you so that you can understand why you're receiving this information. So first off, the title of the article, Right Sizing Retirement and the Retirement Consumption Gap. So the retirement consumption gap is really the this. this is the study discovering that what is happening is retirees are not spending as much as they could have. So why aren't you spending as much as you could in retirement? And one of those reasons might be right-sizing your retirement. So what do we mean by that? Yeah, right-sizing your retirement. Usually, uh, you know, we talk about the, the projections and over the next 30 years, you're going to spend this much and there's going to be this much inflation. The problem is, Casey, that it doesn't take into account some of the things that are discussed in this article, but right-sizing just means that you start to adapt to your situation, you adapt to the assets that you have. Yeah, they found many individuals are actually starting retirement with not enough in assets yeah. saved. Only 18%. Yeah, right? and then 10 years into retirement, they have 48% of those same individuals now have enough saved for retirement, and they're restricting their spending in order to right-size their retirement. They have enough a few years into retirement, but the big question is, Right. Why aren't they spending? So back to the research. What makes this research so unique is that it's actually expanding on David Blanchett's initial research. Yeah. So his groundbreaking research, which we invited him on the podcast to discuss previously, had to do with retirement spending patterns, sharing with us the impact of inflation, the true impact of inflation once we factor in how retirees actually spend dollars. When you go in and visit with your financial planner, you might hear, oh, well, we, we need more assets, or you're going to need to increase your income by 3% each year. 30 years into retirement, your spending is going to double. And you go, well, why? I'm, I'm going to spend less when I'm 85 versus when I'm 65. That's because you have your go-go years, your slow-go years, your no-go years. And that's what that initial research showed is that retirees don't actually get impacted with inflation nearly as much as, say, myself or Marshall might be impacted by inflation. Well, it's a big fear, right? You know, a lot of people come into our office and say, well, what about inflation? I mean, look look how expensive homes and cars are today. And so it's, it's a real fear that people have been ingrained with. But the reality is, is as you get into retirement, your spending consumption actually does decline over the years. And it's almost offset one-to-one -one by yeah. the rise of inflation. Yeah, this study furthered and really emphasized what was discovered in the initial research, sharing with us that 75% of retirees will see declining spending patterns over the first 10 years of retirement. Tie that in with inflation. Yep. And what do we see? A levelization of the average or even the majority of retirees spending over the first 10 years. So retirees just aren't impacted nearly as much as maybe your financial planner told you you would be. Mm -hmm. And a good reason to reassess every year, right? Yeah. And so what do we do about this? You know, well, why, I think, is the first question. Why are well-funded households just not spending the way that they could be and enjoying life to the extent that they could be? And I think the one factor that I've talked about over and over again, there was a gentleman that came in a while back that said, hey, how much can I spend in retirement? I said, well, how much do you spend today? He said, well, that doesn't matter. Just tell me how much yeah. income I can possibly have. He said, well, if we provide you 10000 a month in income versus the 5000 a month that you're currently spending, 
now we're creating a bunch of excess income that you're not going to spend. And now we could just be generating additional taxes that you shouldn't be paying or spending money or you're spending money on money that you shouldn't be spending money on because you're not actually spending it. And instead, we want to take a look at what you need in income month after month to meet those expenses. Because even if he has $10,000 a month, is he going to completely change his lifestyle as soon as he starts getting $10,000 a month instead of $5,000 a month? He's going to spend twice as much? No, because we prefer stable lifestyles. Right. As individuals, as human beings, you've had 35 years of saving and spending. You don't just flip a switch when you step into retirement and start spending two, three times as much and completely change your lifestyle. Yeah, and that's something that I see quite a bit too. It's like if, we're, if we've been a saver our whole lives, we continue to save in retirement. If we've been a spender our whole lives, uh, we continue to spend. And, and for some people though that are savers, they get kind of stuck on principal preservation. Yeah. Right? Like, hey, I, I've got this many dollars. I want to leave this many dollars to my, to my kids. Well, it's easy to allow your net worth to become your scorecard. Yeah. And you have to ask yourself, why did you save this money? Why did you save it place. in the first yeah. place? Did you save it so you just pass it on to your kids? You know, for the majority of the families we work with, that wasn't the goal. Yeah. It's okay to spend what you've saved. Sure. You saved it so you could actually spend it at the end of the life. And number three, and I think this is probably the most common reason yeah. that individuals are not spending as much as they could be spending in retirement, is uncertainties. Various uncertainties, parts of their plan that they have yet to address. Yeah. One of those for you might be stock market risk. You're taking risk with your total portfolio and your concern with what happened in 2008, what happened in during 9-11, the tech bubble bursting, what happened in 1987, what happened during the Great Depression. You don't have any insulation against market risk, and that might be one of the biggest risks for you. Yeah, the stock market, and then you lead to health care, right? A lot of people say, well, I, you know, it's nice that I'm going to have more money because I may need to be in a, a facility or a care facility for my spouse for many, many years. Yeah. And then there's also life expectancy. We just don't know how long we're going to live. Yeah. How long are you going to live? Well, I don't have a crystal ball, but we can put an income strategy in place to ensure that you have all the income you need for the rest of your life. And I think there's a couple action items here for yes. you. And the first one of those action items is to address those uncertainties. Take a look at all those things that are keeping you back or holding you back from spending the way that you would like to spend and address those systematically one by one in that strategy. That's what we do day in and day out. You know, number two, Rethink, and especially for advisors, rethink the way you're factoring inflation into a retiree's plan. Make sure that you're taking into consideration their spending patterns and not just assuming that they're going to live like they're 25 or 35 years old for the rest of your life. That might greatly impact your planning. And if you're looking for someone to walk you through this process, we have a great offer for you today, a complimentary consultation with our team where we will sit down with you and walk you through all those uncertainties that you might need addressed. Rising taxes, stock market crashes, maybe it's major health care concerns or inflation, we'll address those systematically with you and get you on a better path. So for the next 10 callers that call the number on the screen or text the number on your screen, text CONSULT to that number, CONSULT to that number, the next 10 callers will receive a complimentary consultation at no cost and no obligation. Next up, stick around because we're going to be discussing social security and compensation for your financial advisor. Do you have an IRA or 401k? You think of this as your money, but it's really a shared account with the IRS, and it all boils down to taxes. You've been contributing to your retirement accounts for years, but eventually, Uncle Sam will want his cut. Having a strategy in place for how and when you'll withdraw that hard-earned money could have a huge impact on how much you pay in taxes versus how much you keep. Safeguard your lifelong savings now with a complimentary tax guide by going to retirewithpurpose.com taxes. That's retirewithpurpose.com taxes. Okay, it's time for Casey to get to work answering your questions. And if you have a question, it's really easy. Just send it to info at howardbailey.com, and we might use it here on the program. For example, here's a question that I think a lot of people are going to be wondering about. While doing my research on the best way to prepare for retirement, I've met with two different firms. One suggested annuities. The other one told me to stay away. How do I know which to believe? 
I wouldn't believe either one. <laughs> when it comes to uh, finance, when it comes to financial planning, it's called personal financial planning for a reason. It's personal. This decision should be personal. It should be ultimately up to you. You need to make the decision on whether it's the right vehicle, the right fit for you or not. The one thing I would say though, if someone's taking a hard line, I think that's a big red flag. If they say stocks are bad, annuities are the only way, or annuities are bad, never put money in annuity, never put money in life insurance, never put money into the stock market, there's gonna be individuals that take those hard-lined approaches. And I revisit what was said by a couple world poker champions that I had the opportunity to interview on the Retire With Purpose podcast. I talked to Annie Duke, I talked to Maria Konnikova, and I wanted to ask them, how do you know if someone is bluffing? And they said it's much like poker. How do you know if someone's bluffing when they're at a poker table? They go all in at a silly time, right? They take this hard approach time and time again. Well, then they're probably bluffing. That's why people slow play in poker. They will slow play that hand. And that is the sign that they are probably not bluffing. They're probably trying to get you into a point where they can play a good hand of poker. And so I, I think it's, it's much the same in finance that finance is nuanced, as both of them shared with us. Finance is nuanced. There, there isn't one perfect plan for every single person that comes through the door. This is why it's so important that you're working with a financial planner that has all the tools at their disposal, and that ultimately leaves the decision up to you. If you're sitting down with a financial planner that doesn't have all of those different tools, what kind of line do you think they're going to take? They're going to take a hard line. If they are insurance-only advisors, then they're going to have a problem with the stock market. They're only going to recommend insurance products. If it's the other way around and they don't carry an insurance license, they can't offer annuities, then yeah, they're probably going to beat up insurance. They're probably going to say that the stock market is the only solution, put it in bonds, et cetera. And that's just not the case. I mean, look at some of the uses of annuities. Where else can you get guaranteed income for the rest of your life? What's the number one concern of retirees running out of money in retirement? Concerns about longevity, outliving your assets? There's only one one tool that can guarantee your income will be there for the rest of your life, and that's an annuity. Um, in addition to that, you've got bonds today that are paying near zero rate of return, and that is only going to be heavily, more heavily impacting your portfolio as interest rates rise, because interest rates rise, bond prices are going to fall. So now you have uh, a bond that is losing value and paying a low rate of return. A fixed rate annuity, we're seeing some very large RIAs do this today that used to say annuities are bad and you should never use an annuity. Now you're starting to see some of these large registered investment advisory firms, brokerage houses, bring fixed annuities into play because you can get a higher rate of return with greater degree of safety with the fixed annuity over the same term with a bond. And so there are uses for these tools. That, that doesn't mean it's right for you. You just need to find the right person that can educate you on all those tools so you can make that personal decision for yourself. So, you know, Social Security is a, a key to many retirement plans, and that's why this question is important. Can I start my Social Security benefits while still earning an income? Well, the answer is yes, uh, and it depends on how much you're going to ultimately, you can always start your social security benefits. It just doesn't mean you're going to be able to keep those social security benefits because you do have some earning limits. If you are before your full, full retirement age, so if you're 62, 63, 64, 65, if you are before your full retirement age, then you can make up to about $20,000, just shy of $20,000 before you start seeing forced reductions in your social Social Security or forced suspensions of those Social Security benefits. So if, for instance, if you make $60,000 a year and you take Social Security of $20,000 a year, then you are not going to receive that $20,000. You're going to have to pay it back. So you will have a forced suspension of those benefits. It's actually reduced $1 for every $2 over that earnings limit. So if you make $60,000 and you get $20,000 Social Security, that number goes to zero. If you're in your full retirement age, that number's $50,000, and your benefit's going to be reduced by $1 for every $3 over that $50,000 earning limit. Now, here's the thing. 
it doesn't mean it's gone forever. You're going to get it back. It's as if you never took it in the first place. So if you took it at 62 and now you make too much and you had to pay back the $20,000 you had in Social Security coming in, when you get to your full retirement age and you stop working, you're going to get 20, about 25% more in benefits every single year for the rest of your life, just as if you never took your Social Security at 62 in the first place and just waited until your full retirement age. The Social Security Administration is saying, hey, you don't need the money yet, so we're just going to wait, hold this back from you, and we'll give you more later as you continue to earn. I hope that explains why it's important you talk with somebody who knows the business before you start taking your Social Security benefits. All right, here's a question. Uh, can you explain the difference between a fee-based advisor and a fee-only advisor? Well, I did just this in a Kiplinger article you can find on our website. I wrote for Kiplinger for a while. The article was called Pay Me Now, the Pros and Cons of Advisor Compensation, and I walk through all the different compensation models. There are commissions models. So you've got your brokerage models. Your average advisor is a broker. That means they are in a commissionable schedule. They make commissions for securities. They can make commissions for uh, insurance sales or mutual fund sales. Now those individuals have a suitability standard, so they don't have a fiduciary responsibility for you and your life savings. The legal responsibility to put your needs ahead of their own. They fall under what the SEC called a lower standard. If you want to seek someone that's it's adhering to a higher standard, those individuals that aren't following the best interest model, the suitability model, that are actually following the fiduciary model, you're going to want to work with someone that's fee-based or fee-only. Now, a fee-only individual, they can only charge a fee. So that's an annual fee, that's an hourly fee, that's a percentage fee based on the assets that are being managed. And there's conflicts of interest with that model. There's conflicts of interest with commission-only model. Uh, then you have a fee-based model that's somewhere in between. You've got a fee-based model where if an end of, you can work with this fee-based person on an hourly basis, on an annual fee basis, and they have a fiduciary responsibility, but they have more tools to their disposal because many tools that are out there today, they're only available in the form of commission. Life insurance, health insurance, long-term care insurance, fixed annuities, indexed annuities, you know, a lot of those other tools, the good ones, there's only a couple that you can use in a fee-only basis, the good ones are only available in the wide variety of them are only available on a commission basis. So if you want the most tools, you go with a fee-based advisor. Uh, and if you want the least conflicts of interest, go with a fee-only advisor. And if you maybe are in a situation where you can't afford to pay a fee, maybe go with a commission advisor. There's nothing wrong with any of those three different models. You just need to find the one that's right for you. And if you'd like to ask a question that we might answer here, just send it to info at howardbailey.com. But if you don't want to go through the email channel, you can always go direct and sit down with a member of the Howard Bailey team, and I hope you will. Hope you're one of the next 10 people to call 866-482-9559 or text CONSULT to 866-482-9559 and schedule a complimentary financial review with an independent member of the Howard Bailey team to review just how well you are provisioned to deal with a lot of the pitfalls that can come along in retirement. Again, that's 866-482-9559 or make it easier on yourself and text CONSULT to 866-482-9559. That's all the time we have this week. We'll see you next week on Retire With Purpose. Do you have an IRA or 401k? You think of this as your money, but it's really a shared account with the IRS, and it all boils down to taxes. You've been contributing to your retirement accounts for years, but eventually, Uncle Sam will want his cut. Having a strategy in place for how and when you'll withdraw that hard-earned money could have a huge impact on how much you pay in taxes versus how much you keep. Safeguard your lifelong savings now with a complimentary tax guide by going to retirewithpurpose.com taxes. That's retirewithpurpose.com taxes.